it definitely influenced my career path uh, in so many ways, but even more so I'd say in, in just like my life path, because for me it was really a saving force at a time when I really needed it because I didn't have a lot of guidance going through school in general. I didn't, I had kind of a weird upbringing where I didn't go to elementary school. And so it was always kind of playing catch up and my mom battled to get us out of homeless situations and bad stuff like that. And so uh, by the time I got to the point of getting ready for college in 12th grade, I had no clue of what to do. And so I received a packet from the Riverside Scholars Association to apply for this thing and battled out to, um, be one of the people chosen for that. And so RCC really became kind of that like arm around me that I needed to help navigate. You know, I don't know where I would have been without having that. If I didn't have RCC, that may have not put me in a position to have the job that I have now and do the things to kind of break some of the barriers that we've had in that community. And so um, RCC, I mean, in many ways has defined uh, my life in a lot of ways, not just my career, but it's definitely been a, a huge part of it. I was constantly challenged and it was definitely something I needed to prepare me to go to that next level so that when I got to UCR, I was comfortable. And, and actually for me, the lit classes at UCR uh, were easy. They, you know, there wasn't like there was this big change or anything like that. It was like the, I was very well prepared for them. So I constantly came to expect from the professors I had that they were going to ask a lot of us and that we were going to give that. And, and that was kind of an in terms of, again, setting a tone just probably for my life of just, you know, work and things. You expect a lot and they'll give a lot. And so working with students in schools and things like that, that's always been, you know, I, I've always said kind of the goal as in education is you want people to leave a class saying, wow, that was the toughest class I ever had, but it was also the best class I ever had. You know, and if you kind of have that mindset every time you interact with people in a teaching setting, I think that leads you to um, some really good successes. And that was definitely something I learned uh, during my time at RCC. Everything started as wanting to, you know, make a difference in places where I felt like there was opportunities to have made a difference for me as a kid. So it was all about kind of being that person that I needed at those pivotal points in time. My, um, you know, obsession almost has been breaking down barriers is just I think that in general in life, it's very easy for people to be um, put into a certain place because of a demographic of where they were born or when they were born or their money or things like that. And so Nora Vista was a place where I saw I could go and make differences there immediately in some way. And so once I started teaching AP Lit, which happened pretty fast because my mentor uh, moved on and kind of uh, handed it off to me and IB came along a couple years later as the district said well we see a lot of potential at Norta Vista we think there's a lot of um, kids that could be college bound that aren't college bound as of now and things like that and so we wanted to build this uh, program and it was really the perfect fit for me because it was such an underdog situation and I'm always I really thrive under that and so literally the day I was hired um, to build the IB program there was three different people that came to me and said it would be it would fail within a year and none of them said it in a rude way but it was just oh this is really cool enjoy the year but you know this program can't work with these kids here and that's like the perfect environment for me to really thrive. I would say the people that motivate me the most are the ones that believe the least. You know, so it's not so much that I've ever had like a set role model of like I want to be like that. It's been more of there's so there's so much. Um, power in the world that's used to hold people down and hold people into certain uh, situations. And that really motivates me because I always feel like there's like it's a tireless thing. And so in the particular job I have now, this is our sixth group of kids. I'm sorry, this is our fifth group of kids that are going through. And every year and I come back, like the successes we've had the last couple of years, I, I tell I just told them yesterday when I was working with a big group of 70 of them that like, I really should leave now because like this is as good as it gets like you should leave a job when you're kind of at a good place but I don't want to I want to like what do we do differently and so we try to kind of reinvent things and how do we get better and how do we do that so because I know that no matter how much we do and how big the program gets and how many kids are going to college and things like that there's still a huge portion across the country the state the city whatever that aren't and are getting shut down in our um there's just a lot of negativity, I think, in the world, and so trying to battle that's probably the thing that motivates me the most.